we talk about how to calculate degrees of unsaturation and what really you know is a degree of unsaturated degrees of unsaturation so notice here as we introduce you know an extra bond we lose two hydrogens right so we went from to c5h12 to c5h10 and as we introduce as we introduce another uh, another you know bond we lost two more hydrogens so uh, degrees of unsaturation is, is is defined as right so for so for every you know loss of a pair of hydrogens uh, we have one degree of unsaturation right and here's a general formula that you will use to calculate the amount of degrees of saturation you have in the molecule and it, it goes by this it's the cn h2 n plus 2 rule so this is what you'll use to calculate the amount of degrees on saturation degrees of unsaturation we have in a molecule now something that is also important to point out is that a ring also counts for one degree of unsaturation so you can think of me having this um let's see you have two four uh two three four five right so we have this you know pentane here right but look we lose two hydrogens if we convert this to cyclopentane, right? So this a ring also counts for one degree of unsaturation. Now, and you could also imagine just taking these two CH3s and kind of flipping them around to, to form that ring, you will lose two hydrogens in, in, in doing so. So with that being said, let's jump jump to a couple of examples. So what if you were given this, you know? formula here c6h6 uh, six, and you were asked to calculate the amount of degrees of unsaturation well again using the cn h2 n plus 2 rule right we say okay well the new formula will be cn which is 6 h 2 times 6 plus 2 all right and that will give us c6 H, well, 2 times 6 is 12 plus 2, which will be 14, right? So the only thing left for us to do is subtract that 14 from that 6 hydrogen, right? And that will give, you, give us a value of 8. Divide that by 2, and that will give you 4 degrees of unsaturation. And you will see this general kind of procedure here when once you get the amount of hydrogens you have you're going to subtract it from the initial amount and then divide that number by two and you'll see that general formula appear over and over again now what about this one what if we were given you know c4 h6 right then we we're asked to calculate the amount of degrees of saturation well again the cn the new formula will be cn which is c4 h Two times four plus two all right and that will bring us to a formula of c4 h2 times four is eight plus two will be ten all right so that gives us the formula c4 h10 so all we do is subtract ten minus the six hydrogens initially right which will be four we divide that number by two and we get two degrees of unsaturation all right, so that's just simple straight up all right now let's introduce a new concept here halogens are monovalent all right which means that they are treated as hydrogen atoms all right they are treated as hydrogen atoms so we're not saying that halogens are hydrogens we're just saying that they're treated as treated as hydrogen as, as as you know as hydrogens in the case of degrees of unsaturation. So maybe if you're given something like this, C2, H4, Cl2, and you were asked to treat, um, calculate the degrees of unsaturation, unsaturation for this molecule. Well, again, we treat halogens as hydrogen. So I could also rewrite this formula just for calculation purposes. I could rewrite this formula C2, H6, because again, my halogens count as hydrogens in this case. So this will be the original formula we'll be looking at. So using our formula, this will be CN, which will be 2, H, 2 times 2 plus 2. And that will give me a formula of C2, H, 6. 2 times 2 plus 2 will be 6. 
If we subtract 6 from 6, that will be 0 divided by 2, and we have 0 degrees of unsaturation for this molecule. All right. Now, what if we were given this? What if it were to be C5H9Br? Well, again, we treat halogens as hydrogens, so I could rewrite this formula as C5H10, right? And then I just do my n plus 1 rule where this would be C5H2 times 5 plus 2, and that will give me a new formula of C5H12. Now, 12 minus 10 will give me 2. 2 divided by 2 is just 1 degree of unsaturation. So that's also pretty much straightforward. Now, oxygens, ignore them. Oxygens you ignore, so you, you, don't, you, you, don't, you don't subtract them, or neither do you count them, right? So what do I mean? What if you were given C3H6O and you were asked to calculate the amount of degrees of unsaturation? Well, again, the new formula would just be c 3 H6. Well, deriving from this formula, we haven't even gotten a new formula yet, but I'm just rewriting this formula because remember, we ignore hydrogens, right? We ignore them, we ignore them. So, this is another way of saying C3H6 for just degrees of unsaturation purposes. So, the new formula will be C3 or CN H times 2 times N, which will be 3 plus 2, and the new formula we derive at will be C3H8. Now, again, 8 minus 6 will be 2 divided by 2, and that will simply give me 1 degree of unsaturation. All right? So we ignore oxygens. Nitrogens, remember, always subtract 1. Nitrogens, you always subtract 1. All right? So maybe if you were given this formula, uh, C5H8BrN. All right, so what if you're given this formula and you say, okay, well, find the amount of degrees of unsaturation for this molecule. Well, again, remember, we ignore we, we subtract one whenever we have hydrogen. So I could rewrite this formula as C5H8. Again, I subtract one whenever I see nitrogen, but remember, we treat halogens as hydrogens. So, right, so remember, we add hydrogens, uh, we had allergens and make them hydrogens. So you could imagine this will be C3, uh, C5H9, but because we subtract one from nitrogen, these kind of cancel themselves out. So another way of writing this formula will be this, and then to calculate degrees of unsaturation, this will be C5H2 times 5 plus 2, which will be C5H12, and then 12 minus 8 will give me 4 divided by 2, and I get 2 degrees of unsaturation. Now, how could we, you know, calculate the amount of degrees of unsaturation from a molecule? So what if you're given, you know, structural formula like this, right? What if you're given a structural formula like this? and you were asked to calculate the amount of degrees of unsaturation just based on looking at the molecule. Now remember we said that a ring count has one degree of unsaturation. So the main purpose of ha having this ring, that's one degree of unsaturation. Now we also have a double bond here that will give us two, and we have another double bond here that will give us three. So this molecule will have three degrees of unsaturation. How about this one? All right, so maybe we're given this, this, this circuit molecule here. All right, and we are asked, okay, well, calculate the amount of degrees of unsaturation for this molecule. Well, remember we said, we count a ring as one degree of unsaturation. So you could imagine this ring here, that's one. We have three double bonds here, so we have the ring. We have, so that will be one. We have two, we have three, we have four. 
And finally, we have another double bond here, which will be five. So this will be five degrees of unsaturation. All right. How about this one? All right, so how about this one? What if we had this, you know, cyclic molecule here again? All right, and we were asked to calculate the amount of degrees of unsaturation. Well, again, you could see that we have a ring here, which counts as one. We have three double bonds, so that would be one as a ring, two, three, four. And finally, we have five, another double bond here. So this would be five degrees of unsaturation. All right, how about this one? All right. So maybe we have this CH2 here and we have this aldehyde functional group. Again, remember a ring count is one degrees of unsaturation. We have three double bonds here. So total, this will be four degrees of unsaturation plus this other one here, which will be five degrees of unsaturation. How about this one? All right, what would be the amount of degrees of unsaturation for this? Well, remember, a double bond count as one. So we have one degree of unsaturation, which is a double bond, and we have another bond here. This So this would be two degrees of unsaturation. So remember this, a double bond counts as one degree of unsaturation, triple bond counts as two degrees of unsaturation. Now, this will become very important when we start looking at, when we start to look at NMR spectroscopy and spectroscopy on a on a on a whole, and, and try to come up with the, uh, come up with a lot of these you know structural formulas for these compounds, um, and this will become evident. And I want you to notice this earlier earlier. I want you to notice this prior to just looking at NMR graphs and, and before you start analyzing how to predict the structures of of, of, of different compounds. Right? Notice the pat pattern here. Most 90% of the time, whenever you have five degrees of unsaturation, you will get a phenyl ring, all right? Well, not a phenyl ring, but you will get a benzene ring or a aromatic ring would be the right name. This aromatic functional group. So notice that 90% of the time when you have five degrees of unsaturation, you have a um, a benzene ring and and this also works for four degrees of unsaturation so usually when you have four degrees of unsaturation or higher you're usually looking at an, ar an, an, ar an aromatic ring but that is just something that will be uh, will be helpful when you start to look when you start looking at you know different compounds and their structures